Hello everyone, my name is Emily and welcome to another video on Emily XO. I did not post a video last week and I do apologize. Uh, my schedule has just gotten a little more crazy. So I am going to be doing uploads every other Sunday at 7pm Central Time, at least for the next month or two, just until I can get a better filming schedule down because right now I film on Saturday and then I have Saturday night to edit and Sunday to get it uploaded and some weekends that just doesn't work. It's a really tight timeline for me. So we're going to go to an every other week schedule for now so I can film, have a little more time to edit, and then get it uploaded. Um, and maybe with that time frame it'll allow me to like film a couple more videos back to back so I'll have more footage like readily available and kind of stockpiled in a way and then I can get it up for you guys. But we are back and we are talking about a very exciting set of products today. So today we are talking about some items from the cosmetics line known as Beauty Bakery. So Beauty Bakery is a black owned cosmetics line that was founded by a woman named Cashmere Nicole. Um, and I was reading on the website and it says that she started Beauty Bakery um, because she wanted to contradict the popular bad girl persona that the mainstream media was peddling. Um, and she wanted to show girls that there's nothing wrong with upholding a sweet and friendly nature. And thus, Beauty Bakery got started. So one of the things that I've always loved about Beauty Bakery is their branding. They have got their branding down and like all of their marketing, all of their product designs are just so well thought out and so well put together that it's just absolutely adorable. So one of the first things I picked up is their flower setting powder and it actually does say flower on here. Um, I It actually does come in a really cute little like flower looking bag and on the side it has like, ingredients um it's really cute i accidentally threw it away before filming this so my bad but it is in the thumbnail and you do see pictures on their website if you do want to check it out the second thing i picked up is their cake face concealer this is in the shade mug life and the third thing i picked up is their one of their matte lip whips in the color berry pop so all of their products are cruelty free and vegan and they do all tie into the bakery slash baking theme which is just super cute super adorable so you've got like the flower setting powder cake face concealer they also just came out with a cake mix foundation which i have seen the packaging for i have not purchased it but the packaging is super cute and does look like a little box of cake mix um they've also got all sorts of just different products they've got some eye products um, they've got lots of shades of their lip colors so I will leave everything linked down below but for now let's go ahead and actually talk about the products so rather than just have my makeup on and talk to you guys I wanted to actually show you how some of these apply and where um, because I do know there has been some I don't want to say criticism but feedback on some of their products of being especially like the the face ones like this and the foundation of being a little bit harder to apply and everything like that. So I wanted to show you what my actual like experiences with the products have been. I have been testing these already so this isn't a first impressions but just rather a uh, here's how they go on my face. So first we are going to start with the Cake Face Concealer. So this does come in eight shades. Um, there's actually a really good shade range the the deepest does the deepest shade does go really deep so that's great um these do retail for $24 each so they are a little bit on the pricier side however they are the whole brand is very big on being very smudge proof and very once it's on your face it stays on your face so these are really long lasting um but they are a matte formula and I'm just going to read through a little bit of the description on their site here. Alright, so it conceals dark circles, blemishes, scars, hyperpigmentation, it's long lasting full coverage formula, color correcting matte finish. Um, this one is a yellow or warm undertone, it is crease free and it is of course as I said vegan and cruelty free. So this is their lightest shade. This is Mug Life. Um, the deepest one that they have, it is called What's Frappin'? I seriously, I love the names. They're so cute. Um, but this is the lightest shade. Now, this one did say that it's got warm undertones. Um, and when I was trying to match it, because the photo that they have, I'm just going to pull it up here. You guys see that? It looked pretty light and I have fairly fair skin 
um, and of course I wanted a concealer that's lighter than my foundation so that way it would actually help brighten up my under eyes and I used that picture and I used this swatch I was really going back and forth this isn't the best way to show this, but I was really going back and forth between this one and the next shade up, which is Don't Give a Frappe, but I was worried about that one being a little bit too dark. Um, I was afraid that it was going to oxidize a little bit and just end up being the wrong shade on my face. Um, and that one, let's see here. Yeah, that one also said it was warm undertones, so I wasn't, I was kind of bouncing back and forth, but I figured going with the lightest shade would be the best option for me, um, because I feel like it's easier to work with a concealer that's too light rather than con a concealer that's too dark. So, however, when I actually got the product, it doesn't look too bad in here, but once it's actually swatched, it's very, very yellow, um, and it oxidizes to be very very yellow so this really is not a good skin tone match for me if you guys can kind of see that is quite dark and quite yellow for me so I was a little worried and I was like well this is already the lightest shade I'm not really sure what I can do from here um, they do accept returns on products um, you do have to pay five dollars to ship the items back which I don't think is too horrible of a deal um, they do accept returns. I didn't necessarily want to return it though. And you can see it kind of oxidizes it as it dries. Oh, and I smudged it a little bit because it's not fully dry yet. Um, so it's very, very yellow, very strong warm undertones. But what I have found is I do like to color correct. And a lot of times I do actually use yellow underneath my eyes anyway because yellow is very brightening. So I have not been using this as necessarily a concealer after I apply my foundation. I've actually been using this as a color corrector before I go in with any of my other face products. So that's what we're going to do right now. I've got my mirror just to help a little bit here. Now this stuff does dry pretty quickly. So I usually go with a very large, I just got it all over the back of that, very large coverage here. And I take an actually dry beauty blender to help blend it in. Now I usually start with a dry one and that's not going to fully blend it in. As you guys can see, there's still a lot of harsh lines going on um, and that's okay. I usually go in with a damp one just to help a, like kind of pat it into the skin and then we go in with a damp one just to bring some kind of moisture back to the area. But it does dry down very quickly um, so I definitely recommend doing one eye and then doing the other but as you guys can see and this isn't the best lighting here I'm gonna back it up a little bit all right so it is very obviously yellow under here but that's okay once I blend my foundation out it'll color correct itself um, but it definitely does help with my dark circles um, it definitely helps reduce some of the puffiness as well and it really helps fill in some of these kind of crease areas. So I definitely do like it for this purpose. Now, this very much would not work on top of my foundation. So unfortunately, it is not a concealer that I can use every day in the sense that it is my go-to under eye concealer. But for color correcting purposes, I do really like it. Also, I did not mention this, but I did already prime my face. Um, I used the Revlon pore reducing primer, the small kind of salmon y pink one. Now, with this one, typically I bring concealer up onto my eyelid as well, but with this one, I do not. I just keep it below my eye as my color corrector. Now we're going in with the damp sponge just to. This just helps kind of soften the harsh lines. So now, we have it on both sides. Like I said, you can very much tell that this is too yellow for my skin tone. Um, and it, I did try it on top of foundation. It does not work. So it's very, very yellow looking. However, it does really help brighten up my face. So 
as a normal concealer not a fan and I am disappointed by that but as a color correcting this works really well and it does give really great coverage for that all right so concealer is on I'm gonna go do my foundation real quick and we'll be right back all right so foundation is on my foundation is looking a little rough today I had something not react well with my skin and like from here down my skin is just really rough and gritty and texturized um so my foundation's not sitting right on my skin even though i did use a pore reducing primer which is supposed to be very smoothing it's just not looking great but that's okay we are gonna make do anyway all right so now as you guys can see it did help brighten up my under eyes but the yellowness is definitely toned down um i wouldn't call this a problem at all. It helped color correct, but it's still, my foundation goes over it just fine and matches my skin tone. So after putting on my foundation, I wouldn't say this is 100% full coverage. It definitely does look nice and my dark, dark circles under here do look a lot better, but I do still see some fine lines um, and my under eyes aren't as bright as I would like them. So I do still go in with my standard everyday concealer. This is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I've talked about this probably half a dozen times on my channel. I love this stuff. This isn't super duper full coverage, but it's very soft, it is very creamy, and it does help brighten up my eyes. I'm going to go in with the same damp beauty blender just on the bottom here. I like using, I'm sorry, this is the dry beauty blender. I like using a dry beauty blender for my concealer because I feel like it doesn't soak up as much of the product it like really helps fully get it blended in there I feel like I get better coverage with it I like inner crease doesn't want to blend Ooh, there we go okay so that just helps brighten things up even more so next product we're going to talk about is the flower setting powder this is in the shade translucent so it comes in four different shades you can get the translucent you can get a yellow a pink or a brown this also retails for $24 and you get 14 grams or 0.49 ounces all right so this one um it says our vegan translucent hd flower setting powder allows you to set your foundation in place for a long day's wear this amazing colorless formula puts the oily face battle to rest and leaves you with a luminescent glow with an hd feature it will smooth out and soften your complexion while reducing the appearance of fine lines and imperfections leaving you with a beautiful matte finish so i have dry skin however I like to set my face. I like a matte finish. I'm not a fan of a dewy finish. I find dewy finishes, and maybe it's just the type I've used in the past, but for me, a dewy finish, I feel very sweaty and greasy looking. That is just on me. Other people look good with it, and that's great, but for me, I like a matte finish. So I don't need to set my face in the sense of I have oils to absorb. However, I like setting my face just to lock in my makeup. I already go for a matte finish, um, and to combat that and not look too dry, which today I'm not looking great just because of the skin issues I'm having, but typically I do really focus heavily on moisturizing my skin and keeping a lot of hydration in it, which I find I can do that and still use a matte finish and it looks okay. I don't look dry. It doesn't look cakey or anything like that. So once you open it up, it actually has this little thing, which you can twist and that is how you get the actual powder. The powder's right here, which is a really nifty invention because you can just kind of then dip your brush in and it gets it out, but then you can seal it and not get it all over. Um, I don't typically set my whole face. I also, I don't bake, um, which you can use this for baking. That went right up my nose. Um, I don't typically bake just because, again, I don't have a lot of excess oil to absorb. But I usually go and just kind of lightly set my under eyes. Just because that's where I get a lot of creasing throughout the day. And then I set my cheek area just so that way all of my powders will blend out nicely on top of it and not take away too much of my coverage. I really do like 
this. Um, I think it's very nice for a translucent powder. I also like that it doesn't have much of a smell to it. Some powders have such a weird smell to them. I don't know why, but they do. So I just use it very lightly and then I get very sweaty in the center of my forehead. So I like to set that too. Like I said, I just use a very little bit on my brush and just kind of lightly tap it on. All right, so that's the powder. Um, I wouldn't say now it cleans fine lines and blurs imperfections. I wouldn't say it does anything crazy like that. Um, I think it looks as good as most of the other setting powders I have tried. I will say though, it doesn't feel too heavy. Um, so it does, it does feel nice. Now is it worth $24? Eh? As someone who doesn't need something too crazy heavy duty, I probably won't repurchase this. I also don't bake, so I don't feel the need for something super duper long lasting heavy duty. But I was excited to try it. It is nice, and plus it was just too cute. Packaging was just adorable. The last product I purchased that I was so, so excited to get is the Berry Pop Lip Whip. Um, part of the reason I actually purchased is because they were doing a sale where if you, it was for spring, if you spent, I wanna say it was 20 or $25, you got a free lip whip. These retail for $20. Um, so that is a really, really good deal. Now, when they were actually running it, they had, you could get Bowl of Cherries, or there was another one, which is kind of like a nudie pink color, um, which is the one I wanted, but that one sold out. So I ended up selecting Bowl of Cherries just because I figured I still wanted to try it, and it was a free product, so how could you say no? And there actually ended up being an issue, and Bowl of Cherries went out of stock too, even though like I had it in my cart and it didn't say out of stock. So when I emailed them about my order because I had been sent... Um, a shipping notification and then a tracking number and I waited because they say processing time is like three to five business days so I gave five business days after I received that to really check into it and even then it still wasn't showing any movement so I just wanted to see like had it not shipped out yet for some reason or was it lost I was really hoping it just hadn't shipped and when I emailed them they actually told me that bowl of cherries was also out of stock but they let me pick any shade I wanted as the free one. So I picked Berry Pop, which is such a gorgeous color. I'm so excited I chose this one. I actually did a full review and a 10 hour wear test um, on my Twitter. There is a review thread I have there. I will link my Twitter as always down below. Um, so if you want to go check that out, I highly recommend it. But I'm going to just kind of show you guys the basic application of this. So they have a little pointed applicator, which I really like. It helps you get the cupid's bow a little bit better. Now they have really like, I don't want to say strict, um, but very specific instructions for how to apply this to get the best wear out of it. Um, they recommend not having any, anything on your lips, like no chapstick or anything. I'm just going to apply this quick. Messed up a little bit. What is with me getting makeup all over the back of this thing? Now they say not to smack your lips together like this while you're doing it, but that's how I apply lips, lip stuff. So I've always applied them and I've never had an issue with it and I didn't have an issue with it when I did it with this. So I'm gonna continue to do that. Lighting is washing me out, but it makes my lip color pop a lot. So. All right, so it is in the process of drying. Um, it dries pretty quickly and very much dries to a matte finish. It feels drying on your lips. Now, as I was saying, they don't recommend any sort of chapstick or anything like that on your lips. Um, they don't even recommend putting it over it because that can break down the color throughout the day, which the first time I tried it when I did the full wear test on my Twitter, I did not use any sort of chapstick or anything throughout the day. They recommend just staying hydrated and drinking water to help um, actually keep natural moisture in your lips, and I did that, which did help, 
but my lips still felt very dry at times. So when I wore it, um, just the other day, I did apply chapstick once on it throughout the day and it definitely broke it down. I definitely noticed more transfer um, and it came off a lot more throughout the day. So if you want it to be long lasting and last you like a full 10 hours like mine pretty much did, no chapstick. If you're okay with reapplying at times, use some chapstick. I have very dry lips pretty much no matter what. So I'm almost almost I'm almost always using chapstick. But this color, I love this color. I'm a huge fan of like these berry colors that are just like a kind of deepish pink little pop of color. Um, I'm just gonna bring it out back here so the lighting's a little more balanced. But yeah, look at that color. Um, but they definitely are very transfer proof. This one is still drying a little bit, so it's not fully, fully dried down yet. But it does look really nice. It definitely doesn't smudge. Um, it gets, <sighs> jacked the face. Um, it does get very like, dry in here especially, but, and if you're not careful, like sometimes the, the application gets a little bit weird there, but otherwise... Super long lasting. I will probably buy one of these for like really important events, like, I don't know, like a, my wedding or something. I'll probably use this because it'll last me a really long time and they do look really nice. Um, so that's all the products I bought from Beauty Bakery. I kind of want to try the Cake Face or Cake Mix foundation, but I'm just so nervous after the shade fiascos that was the concealer. Um, I just don't know how well that would match. And they also recommend using their Wake and Bake Oil with it. Both products are kind of expensive. Like, I tend to lean more towards drugstore prices just because I have a lot of bills to pay. So, I don't know. It might be a splurge in the future. Um, if you guys would want to see a video on that, if I ever do splurge on that, let me know down below. But, these are the three products I tried. I do recommend them. Um, if you're the same skin tone as me... The concealer might be a little bit of an issue, but if you like to color correct like I do, it does work really nicely for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below on if you've tried any of the Beauty Bakery products and what you thought of them. Otherwise, I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you guys again. Bye. Mm -hmm.